requested Rhea and it's Rhea to actually do this video. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to do it first. Yay, first. That's what everyone does in the comments. Anyways, Rayan, if you're watching this, hi! <laughs> okay, so in this video, I will be comparing Sam and Dean's um, brotherly bond to Rick and Daryl's brotherly bond, and we're gonna see who has a stronger bond. So, let's start with Rick and Daryl. I have a lot to say about these two, and a lot to say about Rick, because I'm sorry, I just... Haven't been on the Rick train lately, but I'm also not rooting for Negan or kind of really any of the characters because their mental states just kind of flip flop all around and just they seem to have been making reckless decisions. But um, the way that Daryl looked at Judith in episode nine of season eight when Carl, well, no, that was no, it's season eight, episode 11, um, how he looked at Judith when he was yelling at Tara, so he's kind of learning that his reckless behavior isn't doing good, it's just causing harm, so maybe he'll kind of stray away from that, and we'll get back season one Daryl, but he'll still keep his loyalty to Rick, and there won't be like a civil war between the groups, because I'm afraid that that might happen, and I don't want that to happen, thank you very much. Um, so, first off, uh, Let's see how Rick usually reacts to when people die. He was pretty messed up about Glenn's death, but he eventually got over with in like maybe a month. Um, now Carl's death, I don't, I don't know. I just, I didn't, Rick didn't, I just I expected Rick to have like a bigger reaction kind of like go full fledged, like screaming and holding your child. Cause that's what. I don't know. Rick has his own way of grieving. I'm not going to judge that. But if I was Rick, I would have been, like, holding my child crying. But, yeah. No, it was pretty heart-wrenching. Michonne's reaction was, like, it just seemed so much stronger than Rick's reaction to his son's death. Because that's just how mothers usually are. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I know I'm being nitpicky. Um, Andrew Lincoln is still an amazing actor, though. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, so their bond. It started off where... Rick, um, it started off where Rick handcuffed Merle to the rooftop, and within a half an hour, Daryl was kind of already trusting Rick, and in season two, they had kind of a riffraff, and were starting to kind of become more friends. In season three, um, Daryl just kind of replaced Shane as Rick's right-hand man. So... Yeah, and then in season four, Rick told Daryl, you're my brother, but lately, um, in like season five, I know Rick tried to comfort Daryl, but he wasn't doing the best job at it, because um, Daryl recently lost vet Beth, and when um, Daryl also lost Merle, he wasn't really there for Daryl, but Daryl like took care of Rick's kids for him, he watched after Carl for him when he was going through that mental state, and he even tried to be of some support to Rick, but... No, I don't. Rick maybe tried to comfort Daryl once, and Daryl saved Rick's life like a bunch of times. And um, I think Rick saved Daryl's life a few times, but not as much as Daryl has done for Rick. So definitely, I think Daryl and Rick do care for each other. The brotherly hug was definitely a lot for me because it got me all tearing up and everything, and that was just so sweet. Okay, that's all I really have to say about those two, because Rick is confusing. There's times where he gives a shit about the group members, but then he's kind of off being a dictator and doing his own thing, not really giving a shit about any people. You know my- if you guys watch my videos, I have a Rick Grimes rant, and I have, like, favorite char- I have a few Walking Dead videos where you kind of learn my opinion on Rick, if you feel free to go watch those. But, yeah, I just- that's just how Rick is to me. He give, he cares for one minute, and then he doesn't. So, he he's an okay character for me, but he's not my really... My favorite. I think I might have put him on my favorites. I don't really know, but I respect him. Um... Now, Sam and Dean. Oh god, this is gonna be a long video. So, stick around. Um, let's see. Dean pulled Sam out of a fire from a young age, like four years old when their mother burned alive on the ceiling. And, oh god, 
I don't even know if I can go into this because I love the Winchester so much and they've taught me so much and I didn't grow up with Supernatural like I did with Walking Dead but I don't know it just it made a major impact on me in like the last two years. I kind of prefer it over Walking Dead sometimes recently because of Scott Gimble's writing and what's been going on in the show recently so I'm just kind of waiting for it to die down a little bit and everyone can have a good season and things can just be okay and we can just regroup ourselves at Hilltop. I don't want constant action. I just want to see some... I want it to be like season two. Yeah, screw you guys. I like season two. Actually, never mind. Season two comes up. I just miss it when they were out, like, on the road. Just... Yeah, I miss that in The Walking Dead, but... Anyways, we're back to Supernatural. Um, so Dean was told by his father to take Sam, so he took him out of the fire when their mom was dying, and from that day, Dean felt like it was his responsibility to take care of his little brother, and their whole lives, up till Sam left for Stanford, um, Dean was right there by his side, there for him, helping him with homework, playing with him, spending time with him, cutting, his, giving him haircuts, helping him with homework, counting with him, teaching him the ABCs, teaching him how to talk, just basically doing everything for his little brother, like, as if he was a father to him. And John was out hunting, and Dean was like the only honest person with Sam about it. When Sam found out that his dad was a hunter, and not a business person, and Dean told Sam how their mother really died. But then, like, going into season one, Dean doesn't want to find their dad alone, so he goes and gets Sam. And he's there for Sam when he's trying to cope with Jessica's death, and he tries to be a good big brother and comfort him, and, like, it's kind of his goal to get Sam laid. But that's just them. And the brothers, they know each other more than anyone else in the world. Like, Sam can probably just know what Dean's thinking right off the bat. Or Dean can know what Sam's thinking right off the bat. It's been proven plenty of times in the show. The other just knows knows the other one. Like, Dean knows that Sam likes to be a certain agent in their fake badge collection of FBI agents. Or, um, Sam likes a certain car, but... Um, he tried to trick Dean by leaving when, um, he was drinking demon blood and, like, get to a different part of the country, but Dean knew it was Sam because he hates one of those cars, so he was trying to sneak off. So he just knows his brother completely, and Dean has sold his soul for Sam and went to hell and was tortured for 40 years in hell, but four months up here. Um, Sam managed to take control of his own body when Lucifer possessed him because he had so many memories of Dean. It's just going through those flashbacks and just like them carving their name, they're carving their initials into the Impala or Dean jamming a Lego piece into the Impala. It's muff I can't remember where he jammed the Lego piece. Or like um, a little fire or like a little military sergeant stuck in uh, the dashboard or something. But no, it's just all those little memories and like, they literally go down the road together, their parents are both dead, and no matter how much crap they pull for each other, like, the lying, and, like, how Sam was drinking demon blood, yet Dean still stayed by his side, and he still loved Sam, because they're family, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters to them, and when Sam was doing the trials, Dean was right there by his side and saved his brother, even though he had to lie to get an angel to possess Sam, or... When um, Sam lied to Dean that they were gonna that about removing the mark of Cain, yes, Dean was pissed off, but he was doing that for his brother, and he unleashed the darkness, and he knew it would be consequences, and that the world could end. But he didn't care because he chose his brother over the lives of everyone else in the world because he just cares about him that much. He cannot live without Dean. He is worse than his soulless self without his brother, and Dean cannot live without Sam. Sam's his weak spot, and there ain't no him if there ain't no Sam. One brother needs the other to survive. They depend on each other. And Dean, when Sam dies, Dean just goes completely numb. He won't talk. He just looks so dead inside, and he cries. And when Dean dies, Sam isn't his empathetic, caring, and kind, loving self. He's worse than his soulless self. And his soulless self, if you watch season six, you know what I'm talking about. But his soulless self didn't have emotions and was killing like right on point and didn't really even care about Dean but no he's like worse than his soul self because you can just see he's dead inside he's empty and the only thing he gets all obsessed and like wants revenge on whatever killed his brother or like just focuses on hunting and kills on sight 
just like, kind of like their father did. And there's like little things, like when Sam shakes Dean's arm to wake him, like when he has a bad dream, he did this in season one, Dean usually sleeps with his arms kind of out held, so that, because he's used to Sam waking him up in the middle of the night in case he had a nightmare, Dean's just always there for Sam, he gets Sam a beer all the time, he sometimes cooks for Sam, he helps Sam with the trials, and like was taking care of him, and told Sam like, I can't help you if you don't let me help I can't help you if you don't let me take care of you. So, yeah, it's just, it's, that they have a beautiful bond, and I wish I had someone like that that cared about me like that. So, I think it all comes down to, like, how they live without each other. Um, let's say, okay, so if Daryl dies, or Frick dies, and I, and I don't like talking about their deaths either, because I do love the characters, but I know Rick's probably going to die this season, and Daryl's going to kind of take over as a main character. Probably. I don't know if Rick's going to die. Hopefully he won't. But <clears throat> if Rick died, I think Daryl would be upset, and he'd want revenge, but he would get over it within a few months, I'm pretty sure. Well, he might not completely get over it, but he would cope with it eventually pretty well. Um, and if Daryl died... I don't know really how Rick would react. I think Rick would be pissed, but he would eventually get over it within like maybe a month or a few weeks. I'm sorry. I know they love each other, but Rick has more things to focus on than grieving. Now, if it were Sam or Dean, I've seen it before. Dean would go to the ends of the earth and even make a deal with Lucifer or the darkness just to bring his brother back because he cannot live without his brother. Or he'd just end his own life. Because he doesn't want to live in a world without Sam. Now, if Dean died, Sam would either go for revenge, or he would try every single possible thing he could to get Dean back. Or yet again, he might just end his life because he has no one anymore. And he'd probably slip into depression and lose all optimism whatsoever and just become cold-hearted and empty inside. Either rather would. But they're blood related and they spent their whole lives together so it's a lot it's a way bigger difference and they are complete opposites but yet they work so well together and at the end of the day they do love each other and i know rick and daryl do care about each other but i think i'm sorry sam and dean kind of win for this brotherly bond i'm sorry Rayon. let me know um if you have any points that might kind of back up my theories um in the comment section below bye